Okay, now there are a couple of piecewise defined functions that you have to graph in this module 26. Um, however, some of them we've already gone through in the 320 module, so you should already have them mastered. However, if you did not master those while you were doing the 320 course, or it might have even been the 410 course, um, they will pop up for you and you'll need to do those. For those, you'll either have to go search for those videos in the um, 320 videos or the 410 videos, or you're just going to have to try to grasp the concept from... Um, Alex, okay, because I've already pre-recorded those. I'm not going to go ahead and record them again. What I do want to concentrate on is the topics that you haven't seen, um, those piecewise functions, because most of you, if not all of you, are already going to have those other piecewise functions already mastered, okay? So for here, it has four different functions that, de that define the graph of g of x, okay? Now notice that each of these functions are just constants. And when you're graphing the graph of a constant, it's just the horizontal line at that particular y value. The problem here is that I only have pieces of the horizontal line. Instead of it going all the way to the left with an arrow and all the way to the right with an arrow, I'm only going to include it for these x values given. So let me first write my chart. So this will be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so I know that 0 is lands, it's a horizontal line that lands on the x-axis. But the only portion of that line that I want is from negative 2, which is here, to negative 1, which is here. Now at negative two, it does not have a bar, so I'm gonna have an open dot, whereas at negative one, it has a bar, so it's gonna have a solid dot. And I only want the part of the graph that connects those two. That's the horizontal line between negative two and negative one. Now for the graph of one. Again, that's a horizontal line at the y value of one. But I only want it for negative one with an open dot, and zero with the closed dot and draw that horizontal line in there. Now for two, I want it for zero with an open dot and one with the closed dot and draw the horizontal line in between. And then for three, it will be open at one and closed at two. And then again, just a horizontal graph in between. Okay. Now, this one is the same thing, but um, this one says I'm going to have the graph of y equal to 4 everywhere except at 0. So I will have the graph, the horizontal line, going all the way from the left to the right, but at 0, there's a problem. There's a hole there at 0. Okay? And... Then it tells me at zero, I'm going to have the y value of negative two. So that's down here, which means, and it's equal, so that means I'm gonna have a solid dot at negative two. So you have this whole line with a hole in the middle, and then the function actually has a point there, but it's down here at negative two. Okay, so I wanted you to see examples of both of those types of piecewise functions. Now, the rest of this section has got two more topics and it has to do with even and odd functions, okay? So even functions will reflect over the um, y-axis. Odd functions will reflect over the origin. And there's no fancy name like even or odd for something that reflects over the x-axis, okay? That's usually just a downward reflection. It has to do with the negative coefficient, okay? Um, so for the graphs, you will use this information that if it's even, it flips over the y-axis, and if it's odd, it'll, it has symmetry with respect to the origin. So here, if I flip this over the y-axis, it lands on itself. 
So it is an even function. And you cannot be even and odd at the same time. You're only one or the other, okay? So this is going to be an even function. Here, if I flip this over the y-axis, it does not land on itself. However, if I flip it over the y-axis and then the x-axis, it does land on itself. So this one is an odd function. Here, if I flip it over the y-axis, it does not land on the original. And if I flip it over the y-axis and then flip it over the x-axis, it still does not land on the original. So this one is, they use the word neither. It's neither even nor odd. Okay, now how do you do that when you're not given an image, right? You're given a function instead. All you have to do is look at the exponents. If all the exponents are even, you have an even function. If all the exponents are odd, you have an odd function. However, if you have a mix of even exponents and odd exponents, then that means that the function is neither. So notice here I have an exponent of 4, which is even, an exponent of 3, which is odd. That's a mix. So the entire function is neither odd nor e even. For this one, you have x squared, and it's the only term there, and squared is even. So this is an even function. Here, you have x, which has an exponent of 1, and you have a constant, which is actually x to the power 0. No x's, right? 0 is even. 1 is odd. So this is actually neither even nor odd. Here you have an exponent of 2. Here you have an exponent of 1. And here you have an exponent of 0. So these two guys are even exponents. This one's an odd exponent. So the whole thing is neither e even nor odd. Here you have 3, here you have 1. Both of those are odd exponents, so the entire function is odd. Here you have x squared and x to the 0. Both of those exponents are even, so you have an even function here. Now the last topic of module 26 is some more situations going on with the even and the odds, okay? So you basically have to look at what you have here. So for the fractions, you do the same rules. If it's even, um, odd, that whole same thing, okay? The only thing you need to know here is that when you take the absolute value of something, that's automatically going to be um, an even function or an even exponent, okay? Because all of those x values, when they come out of the bars, are going to be positive no matter what. So the y value is always going to be positive, and so it should reflect over the y axis. Think of the absolute value of x, right? It is symmetric with respect to the y axis, so that's why it's an even function, okay? So here, notice that you have something that is considered even times something else that is considered even, and this is also considered even. So if you've got even times an even, you end up with even, right? And then you're adding an even, so you're going to end up with even. That function is an even function. Here, when it comes to square roots, you only need, or roots, any kind of roots, whether they're cubed, squared, it doesn't matter what they are. Um, what you need to look at is what's inside, okay? So... If what you have inside is even, the function inside is even, then the whole thing is even. If what you have on the inside is odd, then the whole thing is odd. It really doesn't matter what kind of root you're taking, whether it's a cube root or a square root. You just need to concentrate on what's on the inside. Okay? So for this, in, this particular example, you only have one term, and because of the square, it's an even term, which makes this entire function an even function. Here, you have x squared and x to the 0. Both are even. So since the inside is even, the entire thing is even. Now for the fractions, you do them just like you do the regular functions. Look at the whole denominator. There's only one term here, and it's odd, so the whole thing is odd. Here you have x to the 1. Here you have x to the 0. You can't have part of it odd and part of it even, so this one's neither. 
And then here you have x squared, which is even, and so the whole thing is even. Okay, and that's the end of module 26.